The video shows the preliminary setup of dial indicator on the workpiece. So we are setting up the dial indicator as it should be at the zero point and it should be at one side of the tapper. The dial indicator point should have a contact on the workpiece. So make sure of that. So here we are checking that whether the dial indicator is touching on the workpiece so it is confirmed so now we are going to take the reading by moving the dial indicator point from one tapper point to the other side of the tapper point tapper end so there the dial indicator rotates one complete revolution and it doesn't complete the second one so it was around 91 it stops so uh, 1.91 that is the reading shows on the dial indicator so now according to the dial indicator reading we are going to select the slip gauge we are going to select the slip gauge as per the reading of dial indicator so it shows 1.91 as the first reading so according to that the slip gauge is selected so we have to handle the slip gauges very very carefully now the slip gauge is placed at the bottom of the sign center so there it is placed now we have to repeat the same procedure as we did we are going to move the dial indicator from one end of the tapper to the another end of the tapper and we are going to note down the reading which shows on the dial indicator so here again it completes one revolution completely and it stops at 40 so it is 1.4 the second reading is 1.4 the slip case should be selected for the current reading as well as addition of the previous reading so the previous reading is 1.91 and the current reading shows 1.4 so we have to select the slip cages for this two readings the summation of these two readings that is 3.31 There we go. We have as per the value that is 3.31. We are going to select the slip cages. So accurately have to select, then only the reading will be accurate. One point three one plus two. There it shows around three point three one. So two slip cages has been selected and it is joined by sliding one another. And now the slip cage is placed under the sign center at the bottom of the sign center. And now there it shows how we have placed the slip cages under the sign center. This is how we have to place the slip cages and now again we are going to repeat the experiment for the third value for the third reading now again the dial indicator is moved from one end of the tapper to the another end and we have to note down the reading which shows on the dial indicator there so it crosses more than one revolution and it stops around 25 so it is 1.25 so the previous reading was 3.31 and the current reading shows 1.25 so the summation of this two value shows 4.56 so now for 4.56 we have to select the slip cage and it has to be placed under the sign center and we have to repeat the experiment again and again 
so now we are selecting the slip cages so we have to select accurately 4.56 this before like this you have to do again and again now again the experiment has to be repeated we are going to move the dial indicator from one end of the tapper to the another end and we are going to note down the reading which shows on the dial indicator so again it crosses more than one revolution so 4.56 was the previous reading and now it shows around 1.10 so the summation of that will give you 5.66 so now we are going to select the slip cages according to this reading 5.66 so we have added this 1.10 slip cage to the previous one and again the slip cage is placed at the placed under the sign center carefully so again we are going to repeat it the dial gauge is going to be moved from one end of the tapper to the another end and the reading should be noted So while you are doing the experiment, you have to be very very careful. So here it shows. So it is lesser than one revolution. So it is around 0.57. So point five seven. So the slip cage has to be selected according to the previous reading and the current reading. Summation of that previous and current reading. So we are choosing the slip cage according to that. So you have to repeat the experiment. like this until the reading comes zero so at one point while you are moving the dial indicator point from one end of the tapper to the another end it doesn't it does not show any value on the dial indicator so that is the final point So at that point we have to find out the height of that slip cage. So like this we have to go on until we are getting the zero. See here. So this is the last slip cage that we have selected. So, in that slip cages, we have got zero slip constantly when you are moving the dial indicator from one end to the other end. It shows zero. So, the final value that we found is 10 and 0.5. So, it is 10.5. So, at 10.5.